So have you ever run into a situation where maybe you're dealing with an older home where it doesn't have a ground wire, or maybe you're using a lot of things that are outdoor tools and GFCIs for whatever reason are not really present around that residence or structure that you're working around? Well, it's incredibly important to make sure that you do have GFCI protection in those instances, especially in damp or outdoor areas in the event that there is a ground fault you wanna make sure that you are protected so that you don't get shocked or electrocuted. Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can take any cord and make it GFCI protected. By adding this, it's gonna add a layer of protection to help mitigate from possible shock or possible electrocution. So let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so here is your standard extension cord. Obviously, they come in a bunch of different shapes and sizes. It can be an appliance cord, it does not matter any cord that you're wanting to get GFCI protection for, this is going to work for. In this case, I don't have a damaged cord on this end or anything. So in order to make this work, you would need to lop off or cut off this male end. So I can very easily do that by using these wire strippers here, put them in the cutting section and just cut it off like so. Then after that's cut off, we'll need to remove some of the sheathing from the cable to expose the wires that are inside. For this particular install, there really doesn't need to be a whole lot that is taken off. We definitely don't wanna take it down too far because we don't want any exposed wires coming out of the bottom of our GFCI plug. And one way we can tell how much insulation needs to be removed is on this GFCI plug. If you look down here, there is a strip gauge. We can just put this up on that strip gauge there, mark where it needs to be cut or removing the outer jacket and then exposing the insulation. So I've got it marked right there. So I'll just very, very carefully take a knife and just score all the way around that outer jacket. We wanna make sure I don't go too deep down into it and accidentally cut the insulation on the wires underneath. And then we just pull that outer jacket off and there are exposed wires. All right, so now let's talk about this GFCI plug that we are about to connect to our extension cord. So as you can see, this is a standard 15 amp plug. As you can see down here, we've got our housing. This is where the wiring is gonna run into it. There is a brass colored screw, a green screw in the middle, and a silver colored screw all the way over here to the right. Brass is for hot, green is for ground, and the silver screw is for the neutral wire. If we flip it up over here to the other side, this is where you're gonna see where you can tell whether or not you've got GFCI protection or not. You will have a couple of different lights here. You've got one for load, and then you also have one that will show you if you're having a fault. If there is in fact a ground fault going on, this will let you know. We also have a test button here, just like you do on your standard GFCIs, so that you can test this and make sure that it is working prior to using it to know that you are protected while this is being used. All right, so now getting back into the install of it, we've got our cord here and we've still got the plug open here to make all of our connections. One of the first things that we wanna do though is down here at the bottom, we want this to be weatherproofed. Depending on the size of your cord, you've got a few different ring seals to pick from. In this case, we're gonna use this one here because that's gonna be the proper diameter for this particular cord. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our cord, take our ring seal, we're gonna run the wires through the ring seal and then down onto the cord itself. Next, we need to remove the insulation from each one of these wires to then install on the corresponding terminal screws. And again, the way that we can tell how much insulation needs to be removed is by looking at this cover. And you'll see here for the strip gauge, you'll see where it says insulated. We wanna keep this part of the cord insulated. And then this over here, this is showing exactly how much of the wire or the copper in the wire should be exposed. So again, you can just put this up on the strip gauge, mark on the wire how much you need to remove from it. Then with some wire strippers, just put it in the correct jaw of the wire strippers. We wanna make sure it's in the jaw for the stranded side here. And then once it's in the jaw, we just clamp down on our wire strippers and remove the insulation like so. And as you can see, this is stranded wire. So we wanna be very careful when we're dealing with stranded wire because each one of those strands can be a little bit fragile and fairly easy to break. So you wanna be careful when stripping it and you also wanna be careful when working with it. Then once all those wires are exposed, we wanna take our stranded wire and just make sure that it's all twisted together. This way we're avoiding having any stray strands that could then easily break. So now we can take our cord and our wiring and our new plug and I've already got them in the order as to which one of these screws that they get connected to. And for me, I always like to start with my ground whenever I'm wiring something up. And all I need to do is slide it up underneath of where that green ground screw is. There is a plate that then comes up as we tighten it down. It's gonna come up like a vise and hold that wire in place. So I'm just gonna slide it up underneath of that top plate like so. And then once that's in place, I can take my screwdriver 
and tighten it down. And so now my ground wire is firmly in place and we have a great connection. Next, I'm gonna do the exact same thing with my white neutral, slide it up underneath of the top plate where that silver colored terminal screw is. And then same thing, now that that's in place, I can now take my screwdriver and tighten it down. And so of course, the last wire I've got is my black hot wire, same thing. Put it up underneath of the plate of that brass colored terminal screw. Then once it's in place, go ahead and tighten it down. All right, so now all of the wires are installed and connected into this new GFCI plug. Now that those are in place, now we need to take our cord clamp and that's gonna go over our cord right here and then screw into each one of these holes on both sides. So just place it up over that cord like so. Then we're gonna use two of the screws that are included with this plug. I'm gonna get them started by hand. All right, so now I've got those screws started by hand. Now I'll take my screwdriver and tighten them down the rest of the way. And while I'm doing this, what this cord clamp is doing is it's obviously clamping down on the cord. It's gonna hold it in place. It's gonna make it to where if somebody pulls on it, makes it a lot harder to pull those wires out from underneath of those terminal screws, removing their connection. And it's also providing strain relief for the cord as a whole. All right, so now at this point, I wanna take my ring seal that I installed at the very beginning, and I wanna put it right down here at the very base where you see these teeth are at. This ring seal is gonna go right in there and that's gonna help give us a weather tight seal down at the bottom so it helps keep the weather out and any insects. Then once that's in place, we'll take our cover plate, set it in over the top, make sure the ring seal is setting into the top of that cover plate as well. Then once that's in place, we take the remaining screws for this, there will be four of them, and insert them into each one of those holes. And then again, once each one of the screws are in those holes, we can take our screwdriver and tighten each one of them down. All right, so there you go. Now we have a GFCI plug fully installed and wired up onto this cord here. Again, this can go on pretty much any cord, whether it's for appliances, outdoor tools, anything that might be in a wet environment that you wanna make sure that you have protection for, this can be installed on it. All right, so now just really quickly, I'll show you just briefly how this works. So I'm using an extension cord to make it easier to film. I'm gonna go ahead, plug my new plug into that extension cord. As you can see, we've got a green light that's come on. It's showing where we have a load on it that is letting you know that this is working, the cord is being protected, and letting you know, of course, that in the event that there is a ground fault, this is monitoring it, and once it detects that ground fault, it will trip this GFCI. Now, like I say, we've got this yellow button over here to the left. We can test our GFCI on it just by pushing that button. So we'll go ahead and do that now. As you can see, it successfully tripped it. It briefly blinked where it says fault. So we verified that this is in fact working. So we'll go ahead and reset it. And now it's back to showing a green light on the load side. And this is back to being protected. Now, really quickly before you go, as you saw, this was a super easy install. Adds a lot of protection for us. If you're someone that does not feel comfortable with doing something like this, they do also make adapters. And I'll put that up on the screen now so you kind of have an idea of what that looks like. If you just need to use something on like a temporary basis, that might be where using one of the adapters might be a good choice for you. If you just want to make sure that you have permanent GFCI protection on specific cords, again, especially if you're going and working on other people homes, places where you don't know if there is protection, I would definitely, especially in that case, recommend doing more of a permanent install because a hardwired connection is always gonna be better no matter what you're installing than an adapter is, for instance. But again, if you're just needing it for some temporary purposes, that might be where an adapter might come in. But overall, I really recommend if you need something like this, again, it's always best to have a hardwired connection. And as you saw, it really wasn't that difficult to do and probably only took me about five to seven minutes in order to do so. But I just thought this was a really great thing to show you all, something that not a lot of people think might exist. And just another option outside of changing out a receptacle to a GFCI receptacle or even a GFCI circuit breaker. And like always, for your convenience, I'll have links for this along with the adapter and all of the tools that I used in order to install this GFCI plug. I'll have links for all of it down in the description down below. When you click on those links, it will take you directly to whatever you clicked on so that you can check this all out for yourself. Hey, really quickly, if you found value in this video, then you'll definitely find value in some videos that I did fairly recently, one of which where I go over some of the newest plugs that are out there that are super DIY friendly, very fast, very safe, and really come in handy anytime that you're building a new cord or possibly needing to repair.
repair one. A lot of people don't know about these newer plugs, but they really should because of how safe, fast, and DIY friendly they are. If that would be of interest to you, all you have to do is click on this video right over here. If you'd like to learn about some of the biggest mistakes that DIYers make when making connections, you can click on this video right here. But I hope that you found value in this video, and if you did, if you could do me a huge favor, hit that thumbs up button right down below. And of course, if you have any questions or comments still, you can leave those down in the comment section. And I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.